I hope and pray that you all are doing well and you and your families are staying safe and healthy, inshallah. My name is Musira and I will be serving as your moderator for this hour. I'm a Young Muslims member from Alexandria, Virginia and excited for you all to join us for this fascinating session. For those who might not know, Young Muslims is a division of ICNA and we're a national youth organization with chapters across the nation that create a safe and supporting Islamic environment for the youth where we stay connected to one another, participate in community service activities, and strengthen our relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Some of our members also work together and hold our annual Young Muslims Conference in conjunction with the ICNA Convention every year, which would have happened this weekend, but subhanAllah, due to the pandemic, we weren't able to physically meet at the DC Convention Center. However, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the best of planners and has still allowed us to gather together and take in the knowledge and practical tips provided to us by our Islamic teachers and Muslim professionals who graciously took time out of their schedules to be with us these past two days. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept them and reward them graciously. Ameen. Our next speaker, um, Sister Linda Sassour, activist. Um, as our, what's it called, uh, intro to you says, every Islamophobe's worst nightmare and mother of three, we always love to hear you on stage and look forward to your topic. Um, please give your full and undivided attention to Sister Linda Sassour. Jazakumallah khairan. Assalamu alaikum, everyone. Do you hear me? Wa alaikum assalam. Yes, alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. I am so honored to join you all today and to continue to be part of the programming at ICNA. Um, ICNA convention is one of my favorite events the entire year. I look forward to it every year, and I'm really sad that we're not able to be with each other in person, but inshallah, next year, we will have a bigger, humongous uh, ikna where we can spend time together, learn from one, one another, and continue to build community. Uh, I, as you know, am in New York City right now. It's where I live. I live in Brooklyn, New York, and um, I am at the epicenter of this pandemic. And one of the things that I want you all to know is that our Muslim community is struggling here. As you have heard from other Ikna brothers, the toll on our community, the number of deaths and finding ways to bury our brothers and sisters in dignity um, has been a struggle. And I'm very proud of the volunteers and those who have been on the front lines, including our brothers and sisters at Ikna. And one of the most important things, especially with the uh, the fact that ICNA had to change the uh, convention and make it into a symposium online, what I really want to say is that we have to continue to support the organizations. We cannot wait uh, wait it out till the end of the pandemic. We need to ensure that our organizations have the resources that they need right now and have the resources they need to continue to do this work post this pandemic period. And so you know, this, my topic is if not us, who, and if not now, when, and I want to use my, this opportunity to let you know that if it's not us supporting our organizations, if it's not us stepping up for our communities, it's, if it's not us uh, supporting seniors in our community, if it's not us supporting those who are unable right now to afford to buy food for their families, if it's not us supporting essential workers, many of which are from our communities who are on the front lines right now, not just the doctors and the nurses and the hospital workers who are extremely, extremely critical to this moment, but the supermarket workers, many of us live in large Muslim communities communities where our essential workers are people who are just like us. And even if they weren't from our community, they're still essential workers and we cannot go through this pandemic without them. So in this moment, I'm asking people to continue to support the organizations that they've loved for so long. I want to uh, ask you to join me in making sure that ICNA and ICNA Relief and the YM Muslims and the many arms of the larger ICNA organization have the resources that they need. ICNA is an organization that embodies the, the whole theme of if not us, who, if not now, when. ICNA is the first organization when there's a hurricane, when there's a tornado, when there's an earthquake, when there's some sort of natural disaster, when there is some sort of 
uh, need a moment of need, the first people to stand up, the first people to mobilize volunteers in our community uh, are the people at ICNA. And that's why I'm so proud when ICNA uh, staff reached out to me and said, Sister Linda, can you do this symposium for us since, you know, we're not going to have this, uh, you know, in-person gathering, would you do it? And I absolutely said yes. Sisters and brothers, this pandemic is, uh, for me, there's, uh, there's learning that has to happen through this. We cannot go back to normal after this pandemic. One of the issues I've been fighting for for the last seven years and oftentimes has fell on deaf ears in the Muslim American community is this idea of health care, health care as a human right. And I've been talking about Medicare for all. I've mentioned Medicare for all at ICNA, at ISNA, at Mass, at every place that I can find an audience. I've been talking to our Muslim community that these issues are our issues. There should be no reason right now in our country that anyone should fear going to a hospital if they are sick because they are worried about the bill that's going to come with that hospitalization. We live in America in the land of abundance and it is our responsibility as Muslims to be the loudest voices calling on our government to ensure that people have access to healthcare in America, regardless of who you are, when you came here, what your immigration status, all of us deserve access to healthcare. We're in a very, very interesting but very critical year and you all know this and i've said this to you all many times before just because we're sitting at home and we are social distancing and i hope that you all are social distancing i hope that you're only going out for essential doc uh, you know essential items and one of the things is we, we some of us feel frustrated we feel bored you know we want to go out we want to go back to being with our friends and visit our family members but I want you to know there are many communities around the world that have done this before and not just for a pandemic. Our sisters and brothers in places like Palestine, they know what this means to sit at home, to have curfews, to not be able to leave the house. And Allah has given them the patience for over the last 70 years to unfortunately have to be under these moments of curfew. So I'm asking you to practice patience and that we will get out of this. The more we stay at home, the more we flatten the curve and the more people and more lives that we can save. Yes, Allah is the best of protectors. Yes, we trust in Allah and that is what we are taught, but we are also taught to tie our camels. And I'm asking our Muslim community to tie its camels in this moment. I'm also asking you to understand that you too still have a role to build power, to have influence, to protect our people, even when you're sitting at home. Right now, there are many uh, folks asking the federal government to, uh, for you know, for example, to ensure that all of our healthcare workers have access to protective equipment and protective gear. Join those calls. Call your members of Congress. Call your governor's offices. Call your mayor's offices. Join your voices in and in, in saying that you, as a citizen, demand that our healthcare workers have the protective gear that they need right now. You could also volunteer uh, in your local community. There are many opportunities, even with groups like ICNA and local ICNA chapters, and maybe uh, with other local groups that you're a part of, people are sewing masks for one another. Many times when I go out for essential uh, items, I see people in my community who are not wearing masks. They may not be wearing masks and I'm not judgmental of them. It may be because they don't have masks, maybe because they can't afford to have masks. So we as a community need to be looking out for one another and being able to support one another. One of the things I've been telling people to do is in your street, um, for example, I live in a place where uh, my street, there's a lot of senior citizens that live in my street. So what did I do? I took a note, wrote a note, let people know if they need anything, if they want to call, I'm happy to go get groceries for them. I'm happy to go pick up their essential items. Introduce yourself to people and you can still do that through social distancing. You can drop groceries at someone's home, ring the bell and walk away, ensuring that the mothers in our community, single mothers in our community, the refugees in our communities have the things that they need. This is exactly what it is to, and it means to be a Muslim, that you do not go to bed at night knowing that your neighbor went hungry. So if we're not the ones that are going to take care of our people, if we're not the ones that are going to watch out for one another, then who is? And if we're not going to watch out for one another right now during a global pandemic, when are we going to watch out for one another? So this is one of those moments where this is the true test of what it means to be a community. And the question is, are we going to pass this test? And I'm very proud to see the groups on the front lines like ICNA who are doing the grocery runs, who are ensuring that our uh, frontline workers have the supplies that they need. I also think this is a time for us uh, to reflect on the rest of the year. This is a very critical year, sisters and brothers. Um, this is an election year, and you know that. 
And I know sometimes people don't want to hear that. They don't, they're not ready to hear that there's an election that we still have to figure out how to vote. And there are still primaries in many states that have not yet happened. I'm a New Yorker, as you know, and I still have not been able to, uh, to vote in my primary because my primary has been postponed till June. And now we can, uh, in many states, you can call and ask and request an absentee ballot and you can still vote for whatever candidate you want to. You still have the opportunity in this primary to, to continue to vote. But we have to, sisters and brothers, continue to build power in our community. And we have a very important job in November. And I want you to understand that, that right now, the reason why there is so much unnecessary trauma and pain and death around this global pandemic is because we have a president who dragged his feet, a president who believed that this pandemic was some sort of democratic hoax. And because our president dragged his feet, Many people unnecessarily have had to die and suffer um, in hospitals across this country. One of the saddest things about this pandemic right now, sisters and brothers, is that there are people who are dying alone. Our family members are not allowed to go visit uh, their loved ones. So there are people gasping for air. They're in pain and oftentimes on their own. There are also a lot of Muslims in our community that don't have family here. Some of them are undocumented. Some of them have wives and children abroad or maybe separated from their families because of the Muslim ban or many other reasons why. And just imagining that we have sisters and brothers who are dying and suffering in pain because this administration was not prepared for this pandemic. One of the things that many people do not know is that this administration, in fact, when they took office back in 2017, one of the first uh, things that they did, one of the first things that Donald Trump did is he cut resources and funding to the office that would be dealing with pandemics. And so all of our resources were, were cut. And that is why our governors are begging for ventilators. They are begging for supplies across the country, even from countries abroad, because our administration doesn't care about the sanctity of life. They don't care about the health and the well-being of the American people. So here comes the election. So I'm hoping that all of you are registered to vote. If you're not already registered to vote, you can register to vote. Many states, you can register online. You can print it out. You can just go drop it into the mailbox. The mailboxes are still working. There are still mail going around. But remembering that just because you're home, that does not mean that you don't have power in this moment. We also have to remember in the in a moment like this, in during this pandemic, we have empathy. We want to protect our mothers and fathers. We want to protect our grandparents. We want to protect those are who, who are immunocompromised that are in our community, those that we love. But we have to also be able to extend our love and empathy and support to people across the world. So there are many organizations like groups like Beit Al Mal and, uh, and, and Islamic Relief and Helping Hands and Penny Appeal and many of the Muslim uh, humanitarian organizations that you know who are raising money, not just to support the people in this country, but also to support people abroad who are much poorer than we are, who don't have the type of resources that our country has. So for example, you know, one of the first things I, you know, and, and you know me, sisters and brothers, I'm an organizer. I'm having a very hard time being at home. Every day, you know, I wake up, I organize, I knock doors, I mobilize people, I train volunteers. This is what I do for a living every single day. So imagining Sister Linda having to be home for all this time and trying to still figure out how I could be useful in the world. One of the things that I did, and I, all of you can do this, is I started a fundraiser on Facebook for Beit al Mad to support the people of Gaza. As you know, I'm Palestinian, and I know that if in Gaza they are unable to address a pandemic like this, it could be a death sentence for over two and a half million people. They only have 40 ICU beds and only 56 ventilators in the entire Gaza Strip. And so for me, I felt that I wanted to find a role for myself. So I chose an organization like Beit Al Mal. I started a fundraiser online and I had a goal of maybe $1,000, $1,500. And mashallah, our community is always so generous. I was able to raise close to $30,000 from generous Muslims and non-Muslim friends who wanted to support the people of Gaza. So those are the kind of things we all have access to. We all have social media. We all have an opportunity to build content. We all, all have the opportunity to build small fundraisers. Each of you right now can go online, start a fundraiser for ICNA. 
even if your goal is $250, imagine if a hundred of us started fundraisers online for ICNA and we all, each of us was able to raise $250 for ICNA. That's a huge amount of money that could really go towards supporting the work of ICNA and supporting the staff at ICNA who also need to maintain their uh, livelihood so that when we come out of this pandemic, they're able to continue to do the strong, bold, brave work that they do every single day. Sisters and brothers, what I want you to know is that after this pandemic, if you thought I was an activist before, if you thought I was an organizer before, I'm going to be, I'm going to organize and be active more than I ever have. Because now I know what our country is capable of. I know that our country is capable of housing the homeless. I know that our country is capable of giving people health care. I know that our country is capable of, you know, uh, mortgage deferments and helping people who are in uh, financial distress. I know, and I always knew that our country was capable of that, but it took a pandemic to prove to us and to prove to the American people what our country is capable of doing. Once this pandemic is over, I hope that you join me and you join me to fight for Medicare for all, that you join me to ensure that we, this election season, that we hold the house and we build a democratic majority Senate and that we, no matter who becomes the president, and I want to be very clear here, obviously ICNA does not endorse any candidates, but what I hope that we can all agree as Muslims together is that we cannot afford another four years of Donald Trump. And so I'm hoping that Muslims across the country are going to organize together. We're going to build together. We're going to defeat Donald Trump. Uh, and, and when 2021 comes around, I promise you sisters and brothers, we're going to fight and we're going to hold whomever is in the White House accountable. And we're gonna fight for healthcare. We're gonna fight to house the homeless. We're gonna continue to fight for the Palestinian people and for our Uyghur Muslim sisters and brothers and for our Rohingya Muslim sisters and brothers and for all people here in our backyard and abroad. And I'm gonna do that with groups like ICNA. We're gonna do that with the young people at ICNA. We're gonna do that with organizations and people across this country. So I want you to know that this is temporary and our situation is temporary and that we should be grateful to God that we have this opportunity to be on computers together, to be in virtual space together, to continue to be in connection to one another. One of the things I would encourage you all to do in this moment is if you are not yet a member of an organization that I founded called M, the letter M, mpowerchange.org, I am asking you to go join mpowerchange.org. Empower Change right now is engaging in multiple campaigns. We just won a campaign during this quarantine, and I'll tell you about that quickly. We uh, found out that Microsoft, one of the most uh, prosperous corporations um, in America, uh, was investing $74 million in an Israeli intelligence firm that was building a software to surveil, su to surveil Palestinians living under occupation. And we went after Microsoft and we organized Microsoft workers who are Muslims. And we were able to gather, many of you may have signed our petition and helped us call Microsoft leadership. And just about a week and a half ago, we won a major campaign where we were able to get Microsoft to divest 74 million dollars from this Israeli intelligence firm. And this happened during quarantine. So we still have power. We can still win together. One of the other campaigns we're working on right now where we need your help, especially if you're home and you want to feel productive during this time, We've been phone banking Muslim homes across the country, reminding our Muslim family to fill out the census form. We need you to fill out the census form. It is very important for us, for, uh, for Muslim households to fill out the census form. Since if, if filling out the census form brings back resources to our community, a lot of people complain about the closure of hospitals, the closure of schools, a bad infrastructure. If you want these things for your community, if you believe your community deserves better schools, more resources, more jobs, Jobs, more economic uh, infrastructure, more uh, transportation infrastructure, fill out your census form, sisters and brothers. It is very, very easy to do. It took me five minutes to do. I'm hoping Muslims are doing that across the country. But if you join Empower Change, you can also join our campaign to call Muslim households across the country and remind people to fill out the census form. So I'll just end by saying that I'm fired up. I'm still fired up. I'm so committed to our community more than I ever have before. This pandemic gave me a lot of uh, uh, time to reflect on the needs of our community, on building more infrastructure in our community, on continuing to support our Muslim organizations. Do not let our Muslim organizations die during this pandemic. While people are dying, we need our organizations to continue to be strong and to build power. So I'm committing a donation today to ICNA. 
I hope that you too commit a donation, $20, $50, $100, whatever it is that you can give ICNA today, please do that. And if you can, and if you don't have $20, and if you don't have the resources to give ICNA, what if you started a fundraiser for them on Facebook and said, I would like to support ICNA. I'm starting a fundraiser with a goal of $100, $200. You would not believe the generosity um, of our community. Um, our community is absolutely amazing. I, I am making dua for all of us. Um, I ask Allah to protect you, to protect all of your loved ones, to keep you all safe and healthy. I ask Allah to protect the people at ICNA. Um, I ask them to protect the staff and all the beautiful and wonderful volunteers across this country. I ask Allah to protect our organizations and our institutions. And inshallah, after this pandemic is over, we're going to be a bigger and bolder and braver Muslim American community together. And I'm honored to have been a part of this. And I'm going to still be here afterwards for question and answer. So I appreciate you all and looking forward to hearing um, from Sister Zahra. Jazakallah khair, Sister Linda. I mean to your beautiful du'as. Jazakallah khair for sharing some real examples of what's going on around the world and reminding us of our civic duty, as well as you know the duty that's established you know within the Quran and Sunnah Prophet Muhammad alayhi wa sallam. Um, on behalf of ICNA and all of its divisions, including YM, we'd like to thank you all for participating and supporting this first ever online symposium. We have close to 2,000 families that joined us. We hope that this has been beneficial and we do thank the organizers behind the scenes who worked tires tireless to put together um, this uh, symposium with their wonderful teams, mashallah. Please be sure to keep all of them, all the organizers, the volunteers, and the speakers and their families in your du'as. I'm sure at the beginning of the symposium and possibly even now, most of you are worried, fearful, stressed, given the current state, um, worried about family, friends, co-workers, and our Muslim brothers and sisters around the panel. Some things are out of our control, but we have the ability to take this time of reflection and think about what we can do to change and improve ourselves and turn this hopelessness into an opportunity to apply the tips and advice we received from the scholars and the Muslim professionals you just heard from, especially to grow closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and be as unified as possible uh, as an ummah, with Prophet Muhammad sallallahu ummah. So throughout the symposium, I'm sure you have seen videos of ICNA Relief and Helping Hand and tips from our speakers on what we can do to help those are the, those that, that are in most need. Please go to ikna.org slash donate, share some of the risks that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given each of us and share it with his organization that has many departments that are doing amazing work, mashallah. Um, and with that, the closing announcement, the ICNA convention team is still planning to hold a physical convention when the situation gets better later in the year. So please stay tuned for more details, inshallah. With that said, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect us, our families, and grant us strength and sabr during these trying times. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant complete shifa to those that are sick and ill and shower us all with his mercy. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward the organizers and our wonderful speakers for sharing their knowledge and taking the time out to be with us these past two days. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala increase all of us in knowledge and allow all of us to be steadfast in applying it and improving ourselves to spread the khair in and to be outstanding Islamic members of our communities. Allahumma ameen. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdika. Nashhadu an la ilaha illa ant. Nasaghfiruka wa natubu ilayk. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Wa la asr. Inna al-insana lafi khusr. Illa al-ladina a'amil al-salihat. Wa tawasaw bil-haqqi. Wa tawasaw bil-sabr. Please stay safe and healthy inshallah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu.